The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandal and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up. It's directed at those who have fallen through the cracks, and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back. Welcome to Speak Up. I'm Kevin Avard, your host. Previously, we had a show with some members, uh, not members, but some victims of the, uh, the FRM scandal uh, years back. And we wanted to do a follow-up show with some people who actually sat on the uh, members of the House and Senate Committee. Uh, it was the Commerce Committee, I believe that Commerce, was. Commerce, yeah. Commerce. To do a follow-up and talk a little bit more about the details of what, uh, what these people were, were suffering. And uh, I want to introduce you to Honorable Rip Holden yep. and uh, Honorable and State Rep uh, Ken Gage. Welcome to the show. Oh, and you, you both are still on the committee, or you're, you're on, I'm still on, you're still on yeah, the committee. I'm still on Commerce. And you've been on there for six years now. Six years. Six years. And how long, Rip, were you I was on, on it for four. Uh, yeah, for four. Four and years. Actually, we sat right next right to each next other when he was a freshman. Somebody had to look out for him. Right. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you gentlemen coming on the show because uh, after hearing the story of the victims, and, and I know that there are about 80 to 100 here in New Hampshire, somewhere mm -hmm. in that mix, uh, they became victimized over and over and over again by, you know, not just the Ponzi scheme, but by the people who they thought they would get justice from. And instead of being made whole, they, they really got beat up on. Uh, over and over and over again. So uh, can you tell us, uh, our viewers, a little bit of uh, your experience and as you're watching this, this thing happen? Well, take, go ahead. Take, I mean, sure. um, yeah, it, it's, it's really a travesty how the victims, not only did they lose um, their initial loans, but um, the, the entity that regulates um, banks and the uh, legal, chief legal office, the attorney general's office, it was a complete failure on both of those agencies' part to protect people, citizens of the state. And in this case, uh, the AG's office basically rushed into bankruptcy rather than saying, wait a minute, what's put them into reorganization by putting them in Putting that trust, yeah. You, you, you created a bankruptcy trustee, and that person basically said, okay, I'm going to take all of your collateral, and if you don't give it to me, I'm going to sue you. So essentially, he um, coerced them or extorted them. Legally. <laughs> Everything's legal right. in this day and age. Um, and so they not only lost their, their loan, their loan, but now they lost their collateral, which was twice the amount of the loan. So they're getting victimized then. And what makes this even worse is the state put in claims against the bankruptcy trustee. So the banking department said, well, the, the FRM owes us money for uh, an audit that we did when they were in bankruptcy. Well, if you put them in bankruptcy and they couldn't pay you, what makes you think they can pay you when they're in bankruptcy? Right. And then the Department of Revenue says, well, they didn't pay their taxes. Well, and this is nearly seven years later. Now, you saw this report, and you were quoted in the paper as saying something to the effect that this whole report was uh, on quicksand or something to that effect? Yeah, well, the bankruptcy trustee, and again, you have to back me up on this. A great deal of the people on that committee, including the chairman of the committee, truly believes that these were not loans. They took the AG's report, 
which was written by somebody who was involved in the process, not in writing the process. Now, the AG had 11 days to write this report, correct? Well, uh, it, they had uh, about 14, a couple of weeks to write the okay. report. But the problem is, is that the person that wrote the report was intimately involved in the complaint process. So while complaints were coming into the AG's department, he was there receiving some of these well, Let me just add one thing to that. Uh, as he's writing the report, uh, I'm new uh, at that time. I go over to the Secretary of State's office and because he has definitely got to be one of the most honest people in right. politics. I, everybody knows that. Bill and Gardner. I, I yeah. said to Bill Gardner, I says, look, I, I need some help. I really do. I, I don't know, A, what I'm doing. But it says here that, that you agreed with this report. Quiet. Just to say nothing. I said, you agreed? He says, no, I don't agree with this report. I says, why is your name on the report? And he told me what happened. It, they coerced it on to the report. He says, you know, you're the only one who ever asked me. Yeah, didn't you say he agreed was, with this portion? Only this, a small portion of the report, but they put his name on it to make it look like he agreed with it. And who the, is they? The, well, Richard Head, Richard the, Head attorney the attorney general's office. General's office. Now, he, Richard Head was what, assistant attorney general? Yeah, he was. Um, he wasn't the attorney general at no, the time. No, he, he's not attorney general. No. He's, never, he's still never. an assistant attorney general. Originally, he was in the consumer protection division. <laughs> That's why consumer I Consumer protection. And actually, he did well there. I worked with him on some bills. I never mm. had a problem with him. But this is where, if you're intimately involved in this, you shouldn't be writing a report right. that says these are all securities, which everybody on the committee Leadership-wise, believe and that. Just for the for our, our, our guests, mm -hmm. FRM was basically a, a holding company where they would take in funds from. Uh, explain how that worked. Yeah, basically, you were let's say an investor. You need a, um, well, you weren't an investor. You were a lender. Okay, a lender. That's okay. it's that's important because a lender has something tangible, collateral. Investors don't invest in the stock market. You don't have anything. Okay. So that's important to All right. know. Um, but what would happen is FRM would bring you, who's a person, a borrower, together with me, somebody who would like to lend money. You said to me, Rip, I've got a $100,000 house. I need $25,000. I'll put my house up for collateral. FRM would be the, the go-between, go -between, the middleman. Right. You know. And they charge a 4% or something. And then yeah. it, it, for a while, the business was solid. Then as business started to falter, they would say to people, by the way, you made 30% on this loan. I have a couple other loans coming down. Let me hold the money. I'll, I'll, I'll roll it in. So that's how right. they were collecting all the money. So finally, some of these people said, well, wait a minute. No, no, no. I want to cash out. At and that point. But that's when the Ponzi doors scheme close. falters. Of which, this is interesting, because banking is very fascinating. You've got to understand that Hildreth was the a banking commissioner. Two of his brothers were invested in FRM. FRM went down. When it went down, his brothers were out of it. So you got the banking, banking commissioner. When it closed, the banking commissioner and the assistant banking commissioner went up and got the computers, brought the computers back to, and this is from the System Banking Commission of Florida. This is documented. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all in the transcript. Brought I the have computers all back to Concord. The next day, the assistant in Hildreth with the Banking Commission brought them back up. What happened in between? Why did they bring them down? So. Somebody cleaned some files. Someone. Something so, can I ask a question? If, if Hildreth, right there, shouldn't there have been a red flag if, if, if uh, his. Brothers were investing in well, the red say, flags all he, over the place. He did say he tried to um, recuse himself, but he noted that How? he was recused. To me, a recusal says, okay, I can't participate in this. Right. I'm not, so it's like the current um, attorney general, Joe Foster, will not, um, he has recused himself from any kind of proceedings, hearings on this issue because he represented some people. So who would uh, be in his, his, his position then, the assistant attorney general? Well, that, uh, Ann Rice has um, been handling okay. th their position. She was at the last hearing. Um, but 
the former uh, commissioner of banking, Peter Hilbert, when you say, I'm not going to have anything to do with it, that doesn't mean you keep doing it. Right. That means, no, yeah. stop. I mean, it's pretty simple. I'm, I'm no genius here, but recusal means I'm not going to play anymore. Then Peter Hildreth turned around and got caught, in my opinion, with his Can't hands in a cookie jar, decided that he was in, or banking was in big trouble. They turned around and they accused it all to be securities, yeah. nothing to do with banking. So they, they went to cover. the attorney general. They worked something out at a little private meeting. The securities wasn't invited to this meeting. Then they turned it over to the U.S. Attorney's Office. The U.S. Attorney was there. Of, yes, of, yes, he was there. Of which now securities can't do anything. Couldn't get any information for a long time. Because they were part of the probe? or Well, it wasn't a probe per se. No, the investigation. The, the, no, the, the the federal. Excuse me. The the other attorney takes it over, and everybody. That's when it went into bankruptcy. That's when, when they put it, it into okay. bankruptcy. The uh, no, state loses thing. control, as opposed to receivership. State oh, still has some control. It should have never happened. Um, but that shouldn't surprise you, because at least in the attorney general's office, um, their number to their senior uh, white collar crime. Uh, Assistant Attorney General um, Chris Carter. He, he left, went into private practice, and he went to the AG's office and said, look, there's criminal activities going on. He did it more than once. Who's the it. Attorney General at this time? It's Joe Foster. Actually, he's from right. Nashville, okay. former yeah. senator. Right. Nice guy. Um, but at that time, Chris Carter went to the AG's. And we're not talking about some low-level mid-management kind of guy. Your, your number one white collar attorney says, there's a problem here. You'd think that that would be a flag right. and that somebody would say, okay, what did they do? They, I believe they said, well, we discussed it and we, we let the FBI know casually. Yo, yeah, hold, in a, hold in a on. Casual. Yeah, cause this is the, it wasn't even a formal. Yeah, part of this is important because Kelly Ayer was at that time the attorney general. At the hearings, Rip and I got to ask questions. And my, one of my questions was, well, did you know? And she said, no, I didn't know. Didn't know what? She said she didn't know nothing about FRM. We find out that people in her office were speaking to the FBI about it. So she either didn't know or she lied. So let's say she didn't lie and didn't know. Well, here's the top cop. Everyone in the office or lots of people in the office and right down the line know something is happening. Everybody got uh, Conley from securities quit to write a book, as you know. Uh, Hildreth was forced out. Well, he retired. She, was Con Conley, well, Conley was a Republican? By, was no, he, no, he was, he was a, a Democrat. Democrat, okay. But but regardless of political party, as I said, um, the banking commissioner actually retired, and he did so oh, we don't, because. We, we, he was going to be. He got ran out. Uh, yeah, but he got all of his pension. Yeah, I know he that. He got his pension. And ironically, rather than tell the truth, which he would have been under oath under um, further uh, subsequential proceedings, he said, no, I'm going to retire. And now is in the Midwest with a is pension that. that this is in the midst you, of. You this and is I in the midst for. of a. This is in the midst of the governor, the counselors, all sitting there. He takes a break, comes back and makes a deal with him, and hits the door, and it's all over. Yeah. It's kind of like the IRS thing just recently yeah. happened, right? Do yeah. you know why? Because of him. Because of my friend over here wanted some information about people they had interviewed for this hearings. Uh, we needed that information for our committee. They wouldn't give it to us. They ended up giving it to Hildreth. Yeah, and, and then because it, it was him, he's the one who caught the whole thing. Well, I, so. Ken loves to make me be the the white knight here, and I have to say, Ken, you uh, did. I mean, we were a team here. I carry and talk about him. bipartisanship. Right. I mean, it wasn't. It was a matter of doing what's right. So a lot of people were hurt on this, and and you're are you realizing this at the time, or are you just caught up in the scandal itself at this time? I, 
I, I think, uh, I've said this before, no, no one person knows more than Rip and I about it, right. okay? There's probably two other people who may have as much knowledge or know more than us. But where we come from is we were trying to help the, the lenders. So you had them on. You heard about the two suicides. You heard about people who uh, destitute. Uh, one person went to Iraq. One person had cancer and had got his family involved in this, and he was there every single day dying right before you. He, he died before the yeah. thing was over. And so we got a lot of it. We not only had the knowledge, but we got the feelings from the people who really got hurt. Right. Very, very, uh, it, it'll make you cry. If I well, may. And, it, and it is right now. And the thing that, that, that bothers me is the fact that it did happen about four years ago, and it's not juicy news anymore, right? No, but I, what, what's wrong is wrong. Right. And I got to tell you, uh, I remember, and Kim will back me up on this, Attorney General at the time, Delaney, was going into the uh, Executive Council, and I'd asked him for some information on uh, the report, who paid for the report, and the attorney. Oh. And I said to him, excuse me, Mr. Attorney General. He said, yeah, yeah, how are you doing? And I said, could you get me that information I asked for about a week ago? Two, actually, it was more than that. Yes. It was almost like three weeks. Yes. He said, oh, I got you that. I said, no, you didn't. So I went to Richard Head, who's the uh, Assistant Attorney General, and he said, oh, I can't give you that. It's attorney-client privilege. Yeah. No, I, so he <laughs> is pushing there. I call Head, and I go, look, I don't want any more bull out of this. I want what he, my friend here, the representative, asked for. He says, you In can't. Writing have it, attorney-client privilege. I said, wait a minute. Are you saying you are the attorney for the attorney general, and he's your client? And he said yes. And I said, that's the dumbest thing I have ever heard. So I called the governor's office. I talked to the governor's attorney. Guess where the governor's attorney was from? The AG's office. The AG's office. He calls me back and says, that's not what he said. I said, yeah, that's exactly what he said. So. You can see, it only gets really, really but, complex and funny, comical to a degree. But you wouldn't, you, Hollywood couldn't make this a more intriguing movie. All this whole situation is missing is sex. If it had sex in it, it would be a number one uh, movie. But it's so tragic. And I, I will say this, is that the reason why uh, I got really, my hackles got up, is because when somebody doesn't give me something, I'm thinking, why? Right. It's going to be a reason. And the more we dug, and it wasn't us, the more we dug, the more often we got roadblocks. And I'll tell you, and, we wouldn't and isn't that the MO, though? Of, we of, wouldn't stop. We were just so persistent. You, you're not giving it to us. Why aren't you giving it to right. us? Well, we, why, we, we on Regress, it. we, we had that it. same issue. issue and, and it dawned on me that, well, this is two years. You could just stone, stonewall. For a couple of years, you're going to be potentially out of office, and it'll all be forgotten. The bureaucracy will continue to go on as is. Or that seems to be the nature of, of, of the game. But unfortunately, with the victims, uh, they're a lot more tenacious. Right. And oh. I'll tell you, they've got a lot yeah. of political power. It, yeah. And they have yeah. to start realizing it. And that's well, one they of the things I wanted it. to ask you about. How can these people be made whole? Yeah, I don't think they're never, <clears throat> they're never going to be made whole. Never and be then, made whole. You know, and so they there's no justice it. then? No, but some justice would be one, and they're not looking to be made whole, but they are looking for a little bit of dignity. There is a bill. Uh, and and there is, um, there's some legislation before the, uh, the, for the Commerce Committee, um, and the bill doesn't make anybody whole. But what it does do is the state assumes some sense of responsibility on failures that it made. And there's some um, money tied to the bill, not taxpayer money, not money that would come out of the general fund, but money that is based upon um, settlements that were brought down, um, like the mortgage fraud money, which the state did not participate in uh, directly. They were a participant in it, but they weren't lead counsel. They were Correct. like, ooh. Money. Well, Let's there, jump on there's, this. There's money there for these people to get some money. And, and if, if anybody deserved mortgage settlement money, especially mortgage fraud, because that's where it's supposed to all go, 
This is criminal mortgage fraud. Is there any legislation to, to make the Attorney General's office a little more accountable to the well, people? Well, this, le this legislation would. I, you know what? I, 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 I just see the stories like Jeff Frost. Or, I actually spoke to Jeff and, recently. And how the, he, you know, my God. And I keep bringing him. I don't know how many shows I've talked about Jeff Frost. Mm -hmm. And the thing that keeps ringing in my ears is, again, when I was sitting in the committee, I asked Mr. Head, Richard Head, you know, did what, what happened? Well, we misinterpreted the law. That's well, not your acceptable. Mis your misinterpretation cost Mr. Frost a hundred to uh, well, uh, plus hundred thousand dollars, hundred eighty thousand yeah. dollars, and then and now he's trying to get his, he recoup his money back. You can't just say, "Oops!" You can't just railroad people. Okay. No, Head is not the Assistant Attorney General. No, back then when yeah. when he came before our committee, all he I'm is saying is, huh? Assistant Attorney. All I'm saying right now is the fact that in, he was rep in our committee yeah. at the time. Yeah. And it's just the nature of what I'm trying to get at is that the government needs to be more accountable to the people. You can't just go in and to barge into their house without a right warrant or, 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 make, or, or make these threats you want, against you them. You want somebody accountable. I, and I, I, I always have to, to, to point to Rip, OK? Heads up for uh, Assistant Attorney General, OK? We go to the office with the governor and say, no, you wait until the re report is over mm -hmm. before you make it. The Chandler it. report. The Chandler report is over. He didn't make it attorney, or assistant attorney general because of him. Well, I think also the victims, I mean, let's face it, um, and Ken, as much as you would like to downplay your role in this, you had a big portion of that. Well, no, actually. Who's going to jail? That, that's the scary thing. Nobody has been held yeah, accountable. Yeah, yeah. But we can do the blame game Who's all we want, and that doesn't help the victims. And ultimately, right. I, I'm with you, and I, nobody wants justice more than I. Somebody has and to I'd love to have well. these people yeah. strung up. But I also, my gut tells me, we need to take care of the people that the state harmed by its inept ability or lack of ability, their dereliction of Ability to do their job. And Mr. Head is collecting a, not, not Mr. Head, but Mr. Hilliard is collecting a nice Hild little pension. Hildreth. Yeah, he's Hildreth. got a pe pension. Head's still on the uh, payroll. Um, a, your, your Senator K. Uh, Ayotte is now a U.S. Senator. Um, you know, the only one who Conley didn't get any. He left on his own left. to write a book. And By he, the way, we're mentioned in the book. But he, yeah. and he's out on his own private practice. And he, they tried to scapegoat him. And now th there is a, um, somebody, who, the local law firm here in Nashua. Yeah, it's Donchus. Donchus, um, who is the? Trustee. OK. Which is, talk about, again, victimization. Not only did he take their collateral, but this is the criminal part. And it's not criminal, but it should be. Of the $5 million, he gets half of it. Because? He was, he's the trustee. And, and who gave and him the trust? Who, who gave him the trust? Bankruptcy court. I'm sure he's, they're given a wide uh, but berth. But who would the attorney general point to? I mean, it's, it's politics, politics, politics. It's, uh, one, one thing about this. First of all, uh, he didn't do anything wrong, OK, right. all right, legally. No, but, but when he pushed you take, that boundary. When you take people's property and say, I want not only the money that you got from two, two, two transactions before, I want the money that you invested. Right. So, so anything you got back, he took. And then he went to, they went to court, and they lost. They kept losing uh, all these things that they were doing. So I think How much is, is enough? Huh? How much is enough? I mean, these people lost everything, and then he wanted to, to sue oh, yeah. them oh, for, yeah. the, for the amount of money that they actually invested. And, and where would that money go once he, once he recouped it? It would go into this pot. And what would the pot do? Supposedly, he, I'm assuming, they get enough money to try and divvy it up. Was there any divvied out? Yes. I, I'm sure there was some. Yes, I think uh, I know one party that got 15% of what they, they basically lost. But there is, a, there is a bill up, so why don't we talk about that? I think this is well, pretty important. Well, as I mentioned before, uh, there's a bill, legislation, uh, Senate bill. 180, and Senator D'Alessandro and Senator Peter Bragdon are the um, sponsors of the bill. The bill basically 
um, calls for a restitution fund. Uh, the point, and it's, this is important to note, the bill is not um, made to point fingers at who did what wrong. Because if That's we go down... That's not helping the victims. Yeah, exactly. That's right. not going to help out with anybody. And we should... It's there to help out the victims. See, the, the, the difference between... Because he's, he's more honorable and, and more sensible. To me, I'd like to uh, shoot someone in the foot. I mean, I don't I really take them out of six o'clock with a BB gun and shoot them in the foot. I mean, I don't want to hurt anybody. A BB gun, Ken. Well, <laughs> he's a Democrat. I, what do you want? <laughs> I'd like to hurt somebody a little who hurt a lot of people. Uh, well, I'd like to see some people made whole and some people go to jail but, it, because there is, there is some corruption. But I, one of the things I do want to point out is, you know, it, there seems to be... Uh, some type of an ambivalence that people, because they don't understand what FRM is about. And honestly, within it's last, complicated. Within, right. It, and, and it really had to do with not these fat cats who are getting rich off of some poor people making loans. Well, you met the victims. Do right. they look like fat cats? Well, everybody's entitled to their dream. And whether they're rich or, or they're in, intermediate, if they have money, we had a Marine, a, a, a former there Marine who. Some very wealthy people from this area that were victims. Right. Very wealthy. Well, I'm, I'm just just a typical guy. Uh, I believe his name was uh, Peter. Oh, Pete. Pete, former corner colonel, Pete and he invested some of his uh, his retirement, and he was trying to get an honest return. He was he he was a victim, and then a victim again. Victim again. And then a victim again because of the attorney who wanted what he invested as part of the the, the, in, the in the state's ability or lack of ability to do its job. Right, and, and, and I, I guess that's what representatives and, and Senate members need to know. I haven't read the bill, I'm going to be honest. All I know is I'd like to see some people be made whole. I would love to see more accountability with, with the Banking Department, with the, with the Attorney General's office. I would like to see some type of uh, oversight committee that somewhere in I, the near future. I, we were I, saying that I, yeah, I know. four years ago. Exactly, but what I would like to see is if we did no changes at all, mm -hmm. and everybody had done what they were supposed to do, there, was no, there would be no problem. So basically, some people truly didn't tell the truth, okay? And continue. We can't get at them because they're basically immune. Right. So how do we get at them next time? Well, we, we, we need to work on that, obviously. Yeah. But if, if is an illusion, because it seems to me more and more these days we're finding people, uh, uh, or agencies, just not accountable. And I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm up to here with it. it, it w the people have got to realize that this, just because your head's in the sand doesn't mean something's not going to happen to you. If you've got money being invested somewhere, you, somebody's controlling that money. Well, the thing you is. Want it to be, you want it to be safe. These people, these people that were the victims did their due diligence with what they had, with the information that was they available. They did everything to them. they were supposed to do. Their them. license, there's no bad reporting, no. they went to the Better Business Bureau. Banking should have had something on them. Right, and not, so they did everything that they were supposed to do, and, that, and then and they were punished four times over. Man, there's a big curse on somebody's head because of this, I think. And people don't realize this because it doesn't affect them. But if it happened to them, it could happen to you, it could happen right. to me. You, you've, this is your second show doing this. It only gets more complicated. We're being very, you know, very Thanks. straightforward. It's yep. so complicated, right. it's hard for people to understand. Well, we have to spoon feed in the beginning and, mm -hmm. and making people aware of it. And we're going to probably have, uh, we'd actually like to, and I don't know if you, you people would be interested in, in knowing this, but uh, we'd like to see if we could do like some town meetings around the state, maybe where we can. Talk to some of the victims of, of FRM. Anything that I can do or Rip can do right. to yes. help on that. Also, Mark Conley is with his book. Right. Yep. I mean, he is the a person up. you want to talk to. Right. And, and Mark's a smart, smart guy. Sure. Very smart. As I said, we worked with him and uh, Representative Slackman. And maybe even uh, our, our, our illustrious uh, Treasury, tre uh, what, um, bald headed guy. Bill God. Bill God. Oh, six Bill God. Jeez. With, with due respect. Yes. yes. I mean, so like, <laughs> with, actually, I, I have absolute high regard for. for yeah, I'm everybody sure. does. Uh, Bill's a wonderful man. I mean, yeah. I can't say enough good things it, about Bill. You know, he's been voted, I think, uh, you know, Secretary of State by the Secretary of State as number one in the country 
So many times, I think, yeah. the last time, he said, give it to somebody else. And, and yeah. when exactly. you go to different states. I publicly am apologizing for using yeah. that, that as a description, but I just said. You had to get it up. I know. I yeah. had to, hey, uh, as no. one of the follically challenged, yeah. you know. Yeah. But uh, all due respect, I, I, I would love to have him maybe come on the show and talk a little bit about it as well. As many people that want to talk about it, because I think by uh, exposing it more and more, the, the, the people that are responsible will, will eventually. Uh, well, if I may, Kevin, um, then I would uh, ask your viewers to contact their reps and tell them, hey, look, support this legislation. If you don't know anything about it, hey, well, where can they look at the bill so that they you can go? They can make um, a choice? The bill is on the website, on the state website. Um, and is that under the Senate? It's SB 180. SB 180, okay. Um, you can even Google it, I'm sure. Yep, uh, there is a website that the victims have, uh, www.sb180 info. Mm -hmm. um, it's coming before us next week. Right. So I'm in Congress. Just, so. yeah, just a disclaimer, I have not read the bill yet. Um, well, it's changing. Right. That um, Our amendment is going to go forth. Uh, we're presenting it on Thursday. Hopefully right. the committee will adopt it, the subcommittee. What's the tone of the House on this? It's, I don't understand it, so I'm against it. Stupid. What, it, what people are saying, both Republicans and Democrats, is people made a bad investment. Why should the citizens of the state of New Hampshire pay for people who made bad investments because well, I've made bad investments and no one ever paid me back. Right. You have more knowledge than 99.9% .9 of the people after these two shows. Do they deserve something? Right. And, and we've had, we've had uh, other people in the mortgage industry on the show, and they were talking about how that the people definitely need to be repaid for, for some, something. We, we, this we, is people in leadership as right. well on both sides yeah. that don't really know. They think that they were investors. They were lenders. Yeah. The but, key here is collateral. Well, the key here is victims. Oh, yeah, obviously. Right? But when you're explaining it to them, you, you said spoon feed. You've yeah. got to get them past the investor seam. Right. Once they understand that they were lenders, then you start to show how they were victimized. And the key by the also, state. it's not going to come out of your local school budget. It's not going to come no. out of general your funds. It's not no. going to come out of the general fund. It's not going to come out of anything other than basically your fines. Fines and settlements from from anybody who is doing something illegal. All right, we're not going to get federal dollars in no. return. No, you want no. to have something very comical. The agency that did absolutely nothing or so very little, securities. The first bill with securities pays everything. Yeah. And actually, Bill Gardner said, we'd like to... We'll, 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 we'll do it. We'll, we'll pay. We'll do it. Now, to, from the fact, this is why we have the amendment, is there are some legal reasons that you don't want a civil agency to pay because then there, people could sue and say, look, you're paying this settlement money's going for something that has nothing to do with us. Um, that's why we tailored the amendment and the, essentially the bill to a criminal fraud. And we tailored it in such a way to begin in 2006 to 2009. Is there a one-time fee or is it an ongoing thing? Well, it, it would be the, our amendment caps the, if you will, the pot at $10 million. And there's Spread a... Spread out over a long... Until... With a sunset. And how much was the actual fraud perpetrated on these people? Um, what, what was the dollar figure? Uh, anywhere between 30 and 100, 100 million. Yeah. You see, what we don't know, there are so many people who got burnt and who are kind of embarrassed and can afford to lose it, haven't come forward. Right. You know. Interesting. Gentlemen, I, I really appreciate you on the show. Oh, it was my pleasure. Thank and, you. And, yeah, are there really any final thoughts that you want to tell the people? I mean, we were talking about 180. And just yeah, if, you know, my biggest thing would be express to your elected officials in, on the state level, state reps, tell them, look, what is this 180? Right. You know, uh, my name is Rip. They can, 95% of the people up there know who I am. And if they don't ask, I'd be more than happy to um, talk to any rep um, or anybody. Yeah. My, uh, my last word simply would be thank you. You did a show course. with the three... Uh, three people who really got burnt, who are very persistent. You're doing a show with us. This is very, very important, and I want to. I really do want to thank you yeah. for doing well, the shows. Honestly, I want to thank you because you actually got me in touch with these people. And any time that we can help people get their voice heard, 
That's the that's the the, the, that's the right. gist of the show. Sure. If they've been a victim of, of, of fraud or of the government of some, in some way, or they've been a victim, or if they want to say something that is credible, that's really what this show's about. And I, and I have to say also, uh, I truly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And it was really, um, I want to thank you as well. Mm -hmm. Well, you're welcome. I really do. And it's been a pleasure <laughs> meeting and working with you on this. And uh, I know the victims are very uh, appreciative. Yeah, well, you. hopefully we can uh, make a difference. So, right. Thank you for watching Speak Up. Uh, again, this is a, a follow-up show from the previous one. And we hope to have some more information about this FRM. And if you want to get in touch, uh, just contact me here at the show, uh, speakupnh at gmail.com uh, or uh, Contact Ken Gidge, he's here at Local Access uh, Nashua. And, and until uh, the next show, we'll, uh, we'll be in touch. So, see you then. Thank you for watching this episode of Speak Up. We also want to thank our sponsor, Center for Redress of Grievances, LLC. You can reach them at www.centerforredress.com. If you want more information about Speak Up or want to be a guest, you have something to say, contact us at speakupnh at gmail.com. And thanks for watching. Until next week. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, Scandals and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens, and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up. It's directed at those who have fallen through the cracks, and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up. To stand up and fight back. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.